Hello everybody, this is Mirko Henskin and today I want to show you the usage of a script called AutoWait which was designed to speed up the whole skinning process in 3D Studio Max. So first of all I'm going to show you the normal skinning method in 3D Studio Max. So I just set up a skin modifier and added some bones. I didn't do any skin weighting or skin painting and this is what came out. So it's not that nice but we will change this in a couple of seconds. So just kick the skin modifier and as you can see I'm using an editable poly right now. Don't use editable meshes because the script won't work with editable meshes. And I just hit auto wait. So this is the little dialog that comes up. And we need to define regions. If I'm talking about regions I mean colored parts of a character that define the bone transition. So we can say this is a border, so here's the transition between this bone and this bone. So first of all, I'm gonna clear all those regions. Erase. So the whole character turns out white, and now I will auto-define those regions. This is done by not selecting any polygon and just hit setup. As you can see now, all elements are colored individually and this is what the script does if you don't select any polygons. Now we will select polygons to define, to manually define new regions. So I'm starting with the lower part of the body. With all those faces selected that I want to include, I just hit the setup button. And now this part becomes a new color, so this is a new region. So this is kind of visual feedback for you that you just defined a new region. Now you don't need to reselect all of these faces, just select one face of this region and hit the Get Region button, and it gets you all the faces with the same color. Now you can use the Shrink command to just define the legs. Alright, just hit get selection or set region to be precise. And now shrink it, set it up, shrink it, set it up, and so on. Now I'm gonna set up the regions for the head and the neck. Set up, shrink, set up. I guess we have some shoulders in this case, so just select some inner polygons, for example, these 18 polygons, and just hit set up. Since we have two bones, we really need to define another region for spine 1 or spine 2. So I'm gonna select this region and exclude the arms and the shoulders as well. Now it's time to move on to the arms. Just hit set up. Now I can go on by using just shrink and deselecting some faces. Set up, shrink, set up. and set up. At the moment we have symmetrical regions and we need to make them unique for every side. So just hit get region, deselect one side and hit set up. Same with the legs, get region, deselect one side, set up. And so on. Okay, last bone will be the belly bone, because I guess we have one. And set up. Oh yeah, I should not forget about the shoulders. And as you can see, we need to make the hands 
as the left and the right region, including the fingers. And last regions will be the arms. Now we've stored all those regions and we just hit the calculate button with the auto find checkbox check. And here we see all regions with the appropriate bones in the list box. But there's a little mistake because we have more regions than bones in this case because we defined this ring earlier by auto finding um, or auto defining all these regions. And we need to have as many regions as bones. Just select the head in this case and the ring and hit set up, calculate it again. And now the left eye really is the left eye. If you want to change bones, you can always use the pick bone button, which is here. So just highlight a region, for example, the head, and use pick, and pick another bone. The head region is now attached to the pelvis bone, and the former pelvic area is now attached to the head bone, which is totally wrong, but I just wanted to show you how to switch those bones. And I also want to show you that you can always remove a bone from a region, for example, like this, and maybe just pick a new region. So we have the pelvis and just pick the head. All right. All these bones here are stored in a hierarchy. If you want to change this hierarchy, then you just highlight the bone and the region and just move the region upward. Now we can see the neck would be our root region and the pelvis would be the next one. So this is not changing your bone hierarchy, it is just changing the region hierarchy, which is important for the script. With all those correct regions set up, we just hit add skin. And as you can see, there are distortions, but they are not that confusing as in the normal skinning that we've seen in the beginning. So now we try to make those transitions smoother just showing you the transition so you can see here the orange section is a simple transition between two bones. If you want to make those transitions smoother just increase this little spinner here and hit add skin modifier again. Oh no, I made a little mistake so just delete the old one and add a new one. And now you can see that the transitions are smoother. Maybe 4 was a little bit too high, so I tried to set up the transition value to 3 and include bone length. That means that the script pays attention to your longest bone. So the longest bone will have a transition value of 3 and every bone that is shorter than the longest bone, for example, that is um, just half the size of your actual bone, will have a transition value of 1.5, which is not possible. So the script uses the ceiling function and makes the transition value for this bone 2. So just do it again, add a skin modifier, and now it should be fine. I'm not saying the skinning is perfect right now, but it gives you a good base to start and later on use other scripts or just paint the skin weights by hand. Our little tutorial ends here and I would like to thank you for your attention. And if you want to see something improved or if you have any questions, don't hesitate to get in contact with me. Thank you.